Hi, today we are joined by trainee multimedia reporter at Kent Online, Katie May Nelson. <laughs> Um, so, Katie, how did you get into local reporting? Um, well, where I went to uni in Medway in Kent, um, that's where I went to university as well. Um, and so I knew the area fairly well. Um, I'm not going to lie, after I graduated from my degree in journalism, I struggled to get a job. Um, but eventually an opportunity came up at the, um, at the Medway Messenger and um i was uh, i was successful in that interview i've been there for um about a year and a half now and um and with working on the medway messenger i also work for kent online which is their online edition as well what's your like day to day like in your role um the the sort of processes have changed quite a lot since um sort of lockdown and everything but if we were talking pre-lockdown um we we were in the office every day of um of the week and sometimes working weekends as well maintaining a paper a weekly paper and um an online website at the same time is is uh, challenging because you need to be able to make sure that you've got the paper together in our case we come out on a Thursday um, and also doing breaking stories as well um, so whether that's um, national it might be something nationally that's going to affect um, Kent or something just in our area um, the challenge is to do it um, you know quickly and accurately because um, the nature of online news is obviously so quick, you need to get to your audience quickly and compete with competitors. So that's the, um, that's the sort of challenge when, when you're doing both, but equally, it's quite a good skill to have um, if, if, if you've been working in that capacity. What are your like usual roles and responsibilities for your job? So, I would normally be reporting about anything and everything. Um, so that would be, um, you know, local news is a big umbrella term, but when we think about it, we're talking crime, we're talking um, local politics, like council meetings and uh, schools, charities, human interest, um, uh, going to court, going to uh, coroner's court, all, all sorts of things like that. Um, so it's very, very varied. And that's why you'll hear older people saying that local newspapers are a great training ground. If you want to go on to the nationals, if you want to go on to something that's more specialist, say I wanted to go into um, a just be a politics journalist later on down the line. That's genuinely why um, they, they would say that and they would recommend you go into local journalism if you can. The thing is with local journalism as well is a lot of people turn their nose up to it and not going to lie, I did as well because you think, oh, stuff, it's boring. It's, you know, it's, oh, I haven't had my bins collected for a month. It's, you know, it is, it is that sometimes. It can be tedious, but it's like i've just said you can get so much out of it if you're if you're willing to put in the work so what advice would you give to people who like maybe also struggle with talking to people but they want to be a journalist um i think for me it's something that i've i've had to work on over the years um just where i got a job in a shop or and then eventually i i had bar work and things like that as well just getting out there and talking to people in that kind of environment um, really sets you up for for what's going to happen down down late, later in the line. Um, because once you and then once you get used to picking up the phone and getting in the practice of doing that, for a lot of people that's like the first first big step. You see what I mean? Um, once once you really crack that, the next thing you've got to know is how to manipulate um, your sources so that you know that if I go to this person, they're going to say what I want and they're going to not say what they, I want. I'm going to get out 
what I want from them for this particular story because everyone's got their use you know you know some people come to you or you go to them it's a sort of give and take relationship you have with your sources um and one of the tips I would say is it's is very old school but you've got to get yourself an address book I know you you can store it all on your phone or on, on um gmail or whatever but if you if you have that at hand and that's good practice then you, you know and you can do like i say you can you can use these people for what you need them to use them for are there like any other skills apart from being able to talk to people that you'd recommend for people who like want to do what you do um it's all about pr practicing um your writing style and and um obviously when you when you get a job you have to write to to how their um publication is normally written but you've first and foremost you've got to hone your own skills and i think not only writing you've got to read you've got to read and you've got to take all this in um and not just read one type, if you want to be going to newspapers you can't just read one type of newspaper read read them all read all different types all different lengths of stories all different um journalist topics just take it in and really notice how the um the story is being conveyed on the page and how how this person has decided to write this and and even if it wasn't straight news it could be like a um, a column or an op-ed or um, a leader column they're always good things to do like one of my um professors at uni always said to me read the leader columns in the uh in the papers because they're so the leader columns for people that don't know they're the effectively the voice of the paper so in the sun it's it's called the sun says there's no byline on it it just it's just they're setting out their opinion on the topic of the day so um and that's that's a very good place to start not necessarily the sun but any anyone really because they will have um squeezed the the topic of the day into a 200 word opinion um piece and it will be written succinctly and and you know in their style but um so that's a good yeah, and even if you wanted to get into broadcast, you still need to read. You still need to um, know how to convey words because um, you you there's still writing involved in being in front of the camera. You need to convey the the story over to the camera and as effectively as possible. Or if it was on the radio, you'd have to you'd have to be really quick, succinct, get across the you know the news that people need to know. So you, yeah, you need to read um, as much as you, you possibly can, um, because the other thing with that is when you're going to job interviews, editors want to see that you've got a demonstrable um, uh, knowledge of current affairs. In my case, um, if, when I went to my uni interview and when I went to my job interview, they gave me a quiz about the week, that week's news. So, you know, that's, that's another reason why it's your advantage to know what current affairs is. And if you were going into my industry, so local news, you need to know um, the national picture so you can apply it to what's going on in your area. So if like someone was preparing to get into like local reporting in that industry, um, apart from like the skills you just mentioned, is there anything you'd recommend that they do in preparation? um try and try and get work experience um sometimes they they might not have you in for a, for a full week of work experience they might just offer you shadowing but it's worth going along anyway um just to get a feel for it um um the reason i've written those tips about work experience is actually because i did work experience um at various different levels but it was it was all local journalism and looking back on it i got nothing out of it and i it really made me think i don't want to go into this industry i don't i, I don't like it but that's only because i weren't putting myself out there and i weren't i didn't think about how can i use this situation to my advantage 
Um, so, you know, sometimes you could come away, you might come away from it and think, oh, that was a waste of time, but at least you've done it. And at least it's something that you can put on your CV. Um, and, you know, cause, cause you're a bit, you're a bit, um, if you have nothing on your CV, you, you fit, might feel a bit disheartened. But even with that, there are ways around it. Um, I don't know if you cover this in your CV video, because I admittedly I only watch about 30 seconds of it, but um, there are ways around that as well. If you actually can't get yourself any work experience, then you, what you can do is, um, you know, anyone can start a blog, anyone can um, uh, set up a social media page or, or something that, about something that they're interested in. Or what I did when I was unemployed was um, I, I did social media work freelance. So I would just say, I will manage your Facebook page for a week for however much money it was. And then at least that was showing that I was working to a client's brief and I am able to use social media and make up graphics and um, communicate with a customer and things like that. It was all, it was all, um, you know, it all went in, in that. And even, even, you know, the work that you might have done alongside college or uni just to get you through, i.e. pub work or um, working in a shop, that's worth putting down as well because it shows that you've got, interpersonal skills um so so it's all worth mentioning essentially is there cms you use wordpress and do you have to use indesign and stuff i don't personally have to use indesign that's mainly for um the graphics team um we have our own cms um program called knowledge and i know that we're not the only publisher in the country that uses that but um it's very similar to your WordPress or something. It's, it's much more advanced, but it's very similar to a WordPress or something like that. Um, yeah, and, and there's a lot of other programs that that we use as well. Like um, Mojo Reporter is a is an app that was developed by um, the team at KMTV. So that's our branch that covers um, uh, the TV. It's a TV channel that covers Kent, but it's also owned by KM Group they developed this app um, to make it easier for us as reporters to just point and shoot something um, that's going on and then upload it to this app and then we can use it on Kent Online and on KMTV as well. Um, so that was that was a pretty cool thing that they did. It's all, it's, yeah, um, apart from that, I suppose, there's there's not many other pro problem uh, programs. Well, we use um, uh, Buffer for um, publishing stuff onto Facebook and Twitter. Um, that's quite a handy tool because it saves you messing about going onto Facebook and then onto Twitter, um, and you can sort of optimize it for the two different platforms. We do have an Instagram account as well, but um, those are the two. Well, Facebook is the main one that's driving the traffic. But um, but yeah, that that's another good tool for so social media anyway. Would you say that having an NCTJ qualification is essential for your job? Uh, yes, I would say that um, because because the skills um, that are in within that course are the foundations of for for your job. Um, so reporting for for instance well of course you know you need to know reporting if you're going into news um you need to know the basics the who what when where and why how and and just how to com like what i was saying before how to co convey something in a in the most succinct way um and you need to practice that as much as possible um media law obviously you need to know that at whatever level you're going to even if you're not actively going to court you need to know what you sort of can and can't say in things because you know it falls it falls on your head and and the rest of the the publication to get things done accurately and you know um try and avoid legal issues um there's also elements of the course that 
focus on cutting video. So if you wanted to do broadcast and need cutting video and cutting audio, um, the most effective way of seeing it on screen or hearing it um, in the case of radio. Um, yeah, the, the course, uh, yeah, I would definitely say it's worth doing and, and even like really old school things like shorthand. I mean, some people might turn their nose up at, at doing shorthand, but I've found it really, really um, useful to have that skill under my belt um, for a lot of reasons. It's just worth having that tool in your repertoire, really. Um, at the moment, I'm studying to do my NCTJ court reporting exam, actually. So you have to do media law in order to get your gold standard diploma. Um, you don't necessarily have to do court reporting, that's like an add-on, but I'm doing it now so well, so I can know how to be a better court reporter, but also because um, you need to do it before you do your NQJ exams. So I'm working towards that so I can be a tra uh, senior, senior, senior um, reporter rather than trainee. And what's your like, favourite story that you've ever worked on? Um, I don't, I don't think I necessarily have a favourite, but, um, I've been sort of thinking about the different stories I've had to do over, over the past year and a half. Um, a good story that I did was, um, we found this really, this really quirky story about this lady who was a volunteer at the Samaritans. Um, there's a branch of the Samaritans in Medway and, um, quite a remarkable story because she had this, um, she was somebody who was uh, benefited from the service before um, and called them up when she was in trouble and was effectively going to take her own life. Um, and the man um, who was on the phone to her sort of, um, you know, spoke, spoke to her and at the end of the conversation, she, she felt like she wasn't in that position anymore. So she, she didn't take her own life because she benefited it from, from it so well, she decided to go and volunteer. And about a year down the line, I think it was, she um, was, was um, listening to one of her colleagues doing, um, doing a, a phone training on the phone with a new volunteer. And whatever he said sort of sparked something in her and she thought that was the man I spoke to. And, um, which was and she was just like oh wow so this is the man who you know might have saved my life um yeah that was quite a good story we put that on the front page and um you know it, it's stories like that that um you you wouldn't get to know unless you just sat down and have a chat with someone and that's what journalism is all about at, at, at the end of the day really isn't it so would you say that's like the, the thing you enjoy most about your job um I'll tell, I'll tell you what to be honest with you like um talking to people has never come naturally to me and so when I um started being a journalist I think I didn't appreciate how much you you have to talk to people and you have to um be like personable because because I only the reason I wanted to get into journalism in the first place because I knew that I was good at writing and I liked writing but you've got to have this skill um to talk to people as well which is what I was um going to get onto later because I, I wrote down some tips you can be you can have all the snazzy social media you want you know and you've got to learn how to do that as well but if you don't get out there talk to people pick up the phone then you'll then you'll never be able to sort of get on in this in this um career so um I don't know if I would say it's my favourite thing to do um, because, as I say, I, I prefer the writing side of it. Um, but you can't have one without the other, so there you are. It sounds like I'm a very antisocial person, but, but you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, I am. But um, I've learned how to manipulate that to my advantage. Was there anything that you've done or anything you've experienced as part of your role that you didn't really think you'd have to encounter when you applied? Um, uh, do you know, 
I, what I didn't really appreciate was even though it's local news, there's still, and this is what I was saying before, there's still an element to competitiveness to it. Like we have to be, we have to be right on our game to make sure that we've got these stories ready to go online because the the thing with local news now is is, is about getting those clicks um you know and and that's a topic for another time you know is is it really newsworthy or is or is it something that's just going to get get us clicks you know we could we could talk about that for ages but that's essentially it. It's, it's everything we everything we as journalists do now is driven by social media and trying to get people onto our page because that's how we make money. So um, I didn't really appreciate that at first, um, but that's another reason why you should need to go on your computer and, and have a read and have a have a look at how these things are done. Um, so you're so you're sort of ready for it. And where you've mentioned like how quickly you have to get the news up there. And like, how do you produce it all so quickly? Like, and how long does it normally take you to write an article? Like from getting, like starting the article to getting it published? Um, it wholly depends what it is. I mean, if it's, if it's, um, if it's something that's breaking and we need to do it now, then, then we need, might, it might be a case of going out there and seeing what's going on. If this, for example, it's a, it's a, uh, a crime story that's happening or something like that um you know it might be a team effort um there's been times where something like that is going on and and one of us will be on facebook trying to track people down that we can talk to about it another person will be out there on on the street taking pictures video whatever because um where i work and probably a lot of other local news websites as well really focuses on getting the whole package so that's your words your pictures your video um it's all got to be one thing because we we need that to draw people onto the page so i i couldn't really say how long it takes to dip, get from beginning to finish because because sometimes it's a developing story you need to keep going back and updating it and updating it but even with the updates you're still listing people like clicks from people and trying to get people to um, come to your page. So, so even if it's a breaking story, like that might be a good thing because you might want people might think, oh, I need to go back and have a think about um, that. You know, even if it was something like it's been a crash on the motorway, like oh, I'm heading that way later. I I might have to go back onto the the page and and see what's happening. You see what I mean? 